everybody, Jim Edwards here, and welcome back to the Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. This is episode 113, lucky 113. You know why it's lucky? Because your lucky day has just arrived. We're going to help you discover how to make more sales no matter what you sell. I'm Jim Edwards, your host, along with my trusty co-host and podcast producer, Mr. Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Hello, Jim. Well, Stu, I'm excited. We're going to talk about how to make more sales, I think. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so fact, tell the we, folks what's going on. Once again, I found a question on the sales copy writing content marketing hacks Facebook group, which if you're not a member, you should be because it's lit. Um, and it's free. And it's free. That's but right. you know, there's a lot of very helpful people in there to a answer questions for you and you know and we we have boo. so anyway i saw this this question and it was you know he just asked the group anyone have experience selling in the digital marketing space i'm looking to pick someone's brain and increase my selling skills and close more clients this is from michael so it, it is a pretty general question however I guess defining digital marketing space would be appropriate at this point. Yeah. Um, because uh, I don't think it's going to be too much different, but it, it could be. So what do you think, Jim? What, I'll give you the first round on this one. I think that digital marketing is like one of those big, broad terms like business or <laughs> retail sales or... You know what I mean? I mean, digital digital marketing can mean just about anything. So let's ask the folks who are here with us live. And by the way, you can join us live every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time at jimandstewshow.com. And uh, you can ask questions and, and be with us when we record this in our virtual studios. So my question to everybody who's here live is, what is digital marketing? What is your definition of digital marketing? And you know what? I can go on the Googles and I can do, what is digital marketing? And look at pre-filled for me. Uh, Social media, oh my God, it's everything. Social media yeah. marketing, search engine optimization, search engine marketing, email marketing, marketing automation, digital advertising, content marketing. What, what is meant by digital marketing? Digital, okay, here we go. This is MailChimp's thing. Digital marketing, also called online marketing, is the promotion of brands to connect with potential customers using the internet and other forms of digital communication. This includes not only email, social media, and web-based advertising, but also text and multimedia messages as a marketing channel. This would be the equivalent of me asking Stu, Stu, <laughs> do you have any experience with fitness? I'm looking to pick <laughs> someone's brain and increase my fitness so that I can get in better shape. So it's-, yeah, that, it's that is a very broad question. It is you a are, broad you, question. You are correct. But- Oh, Ron says marketing by using your fingers. There you go. Judy huh. says anything online. Um, let's see for the people who are live. Uh, it's wide and broad term for anything online. Um, okay, so everybody's just, just wide. So I can, however, offer some sage advice if you're interested. Again, let me go look. That's my keyboard. Okay. Um, here's the thing. The number one thing you need to do in any kind of marketing is to get really, really clear on who your ideal customer is. The biggest mistake you can make in trying to sell is trying to sell to everyone. When somebody comes along to me and I say, okay, who's your, who's your target market? Everyone. Everyone, anyone should buy this. Everyone should buy this. This is forever. Everyone needs this. I'm like, dude, you might as well just take what money you have left. Go buy a trailer. I used to live in a trailer park. Like, go buy a trailer and, and live in a paid for trailer because you are going to have such a hard life trying to sell to everyone. 
you can't do it. You've got to be able to isolate problems uh, that are severe enough, pain that hurts badly enough, desire that is strong enough that you can communicate, that you can market so that you can have hooks and sales messages and ads and social media posts and content and all that stuff that's going to resonate with a group of people to the extent that it gets them off their butt and gets them to buy something. And you can't do that selling to everyone. So you've got to figure out, okay, who is my ideal customer and what makes them tick? What are all their hot buttons? And we've talked about that before. That's, that's beyond the scope of today's episode. But it basically comes down to things like pain points, problems, short-term desires, long-term desires, who they see themselves to be, what's their current identity, and what is the identity they want to step into. You know, like, you know, I was fat and 40, now I'm fit and 53. I mean, I wanted to go from fat and 40 to fit and 53. And by the way, age is just a number, Stu. Yes. Just so you know. Um, so once you can do that, then you have to work on your offer. You know, what? now that we understand these people, what, do we, what are we going to sell them that they're going to go, holy crap, I got to have that. And they run and go get it. You know, I, I love to ask questions. What what problem do you solve? How do you solve it? Or what problem do you solve? Who do you solve it for? How do you solve it? What makes your solution unique? And where are you going to put your sales message in front of these people in order to get them to potentially buy? But the the big, the first question is, what problem do you solve? Because pretty much everything anybody buys solves a problem. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's my start. Stu, what's your take? You're an experienced digital marketer. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've been selling stuff online for over 20 years, like you. Um, but it, it now is just so natural. You know, for someone to say, does anybody have experience in digital marketing? I mean, did you just now get an iPhone? You know, <laughs> One of, one, mean. One, one, of, one of these mean. new one of these newfangled things. Oh yeah. Um, what number's yours though? I think mine's an eight. I I've been taking really cool pictures, so I, I try to upgrade when they, they get a new camera. Yeah. So I've been taking really cool pictures. So what number's your phone? Whatever latest 10, 10, 11? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um okay. but anyway, it's you know, it's just one of these things that it it should you know, the name of this show, sales copywriting and content marketing, right? They go hand in hand with digital marketing. Sure. And we, talk, we talked about a little bit last week in multiple uses of your content because you have to, it, it's difficult to spread it out over all the different mediums that are out there. Um, to you know have multiple messages you know so you have to reuse content on social media and now social media is three or four platforms wide now you know in, you know everybody has three or four platforms they're using they're using facebook and twitter and youtube and you know whatever um you know we also have what are you doing It's a stand-up desk, man. I was okay. just, I was just figured I'd stand. Up. Oh man, that's as high as it goes. What if I was taller, huh? What the hell? I, I what if I was no tall? Idea. Lucky for what them, I'm of average height. So anyway, I just All figured right. I'd stand up and see what it was like. I like it. It's good. But anyway, like I was saying, the uh, you know the digital marketing space is massive, and so. I don't think you need to diversify so much that you get overwhelmed with all the different options. You know, learn to master one or two of them. And then that's going to show you some results. And then you say, oh, I'll try this one. You know, I, I remember when Facebook first came out, 
And I was like, man, I'm not getting Facebook. That seems like a waste of time. And then I figured out, I was like, well, I might be able to post some articles on there. That might get some business. So if I can make Facebook part of my business, it won't be such a waste of time. Right. Right. And then my daughter says, dad, you got to get an Instagram account. That's where all the kids are these days. I was right. like, what? I just now figured out Facebook. How am I going to figure out Instagram? Right. right. And so figured out Instagram and then you were making videos up on YouTube. You know, so, you know, I, I would say right now, personally, if someone were, were to say you need to get X, you know, get on TikTok or something, it'd probably make my head explode. Because yeah. I, I just I just don't ha- you, you're only allowed so much bandwidth in a day to get your word out. Um, and, you know, m- my suggestion is, you know, don't be overwhelmed by all the options. Pick one or two, get really good at it. And then, you know, you, you might be able to share it on other platforms without a lot of effort. Right. So that goes back to what we just said. You you just confirmed what we said earlier, which is, you know, what problem do you solve? Who do you solve it for? How do you solve it? What makes your solution unique? And where are you going to put your message in front of your ideal customers? You sh- if if your ideal customers aren't on LinkedIn, you don't need to worry about LinkedIn. I can pretty much guarantee that the People who are interested in your Navy SEAL thing and and the other stuff probably aren't on LinkedIn. However, you might have people over 40 or the tactical fitness over 40. If you were to target people who were like prior military on LinkedIn, you know, if there's a way to do that, but that that might be where that audience is. You know what I've been using LinkedIn for? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Podcast guests. Oh, crap. That's smart. Yeah. Been getting some good ones from. I got this PhD the other day, and it does some PTSD work, and I mean, just really good stuff for the tactical fitness report. So there you go. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not on LinkedIn very often, but I have enough of a little network there that I can ask somebody who's got some nice credentials. I'm like, oh, I like your work here. Let's uh, get it on podcast guest. Yeah, and that's smart. And that would be, again, if you were trying to, let's say you were trying to write a series of books using the three-hour Kindle book method, you could go find people on LinkedIn who could be potential guests for you or people, experts that you could look at. But the it it doesn't do you any good to go where your ideal customers aren't. So, and, and it's real smart to know the answers to all five of those questions before you actually create the product or go rent a warehouse, or go rent office space. You know, I, I heard a, a story one time about a guy who was starting a soda company. And as he went to his grandfather to get a loan to start the business. And he grandpa said, what, what do you need the money for? He said, well, we got to get desks. We got to get phones. We got to get an office. I got to hire staff. I got to do this, all this stuff. And grandpa looked at him and said, boy, you don't need any of that stuff till you got customers. Go find somebody who wants to buy the soda and then we'll worry about the rest of this stuff. And that's, you know, when it comes to any kind of marketing, digital marketing, especially till you can answer those five questions. What problem do you solve? Who do you solve it for? How do you solve it? What makes your solution unique and where are your ideal customers and how are you going to put your sales message in front of them? Um, Not, Really, anything else you need to do in the let's go, let's go learn all about outsourcing. Let's go learn all about, um, you know, product development and all this other stuff. Nah, no. Well, I, where I would say this question would be, um, you know, smart coming from would be if you have a brick and mortar store. Let's say you're a hardware store. Okay. And now you're thinking about how do I have a better online presence? Right. And then how do I do online marketing and, you know, know, digital marketing, you know, do I need social media to sell hammers? You know, I I don't know, you know, might be fun. If you, if somebody's funny in that hardware store, you know, humor can get people interested in you. You know, it can be, it can be serious stuff too. Like very, you know, how not to lose a thumb, how not to lose a thumb. Yeah. DIY Mondays, you know, just get stuff done. And, uh, but anyway, yeah. But I think let's take that example real quick. Just just 
what if you're the hardware store owner, what is what is the action you want people to take? Do I want people to come into my store? That's a different you're going to do your digital marketing differently. Do I want people to buy the stuff I have on the shelves? Pretty much just treat me like I'm a hardware store online and if they need a hammer they'll order it from me. Again, that's all going to be commodity based. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I mean, you're competing against Amazon, which is just a race to the bottom. Amazon don't give a crap. They're getting their they're getting their cut. Or could you as a hardware store owner say, "Okay, how could I take a combination of these things and put it together in a way that someone could get a result?" Let's I'll just use the example of a birdhouse. Okay. What if I could sell pre-cut lumber okay because i got these drug addicts back here that work for me sitting in the warehouse doing nothing i can have them all pre-cut the stuff then i can sell the cool drill bit you know the drill bit that's got the drill thing in the middle and the circle around it that's got all the teeth on it that makes the big hole those are awesome um i could sell i could take the stuff off the shelves nails a hammer all the stuff and sell it as a package and I could sell it as, you know, a do-it-yourself birdhouse kit. That would be one way to do it. But what if I sold that not as a do-it-yourself birdhouse kit, but a fun COVID activity you could do with your kids to create memories that would last a lifetime? Because every time you look at that birdhouse, you're going to think about the project you did with little Timmy when he was seven. And nobody lost a finger. And and it was amazing. So so now we've gone from being a commodity to selling a, an emotionally powerful result that some of you like, well, you're you're over here selling a fun project while these guys are over here selling hammers. What would you rather buy? A fun project that had all the crap in it that you needed or a hammer? I mean, we still sell hammers, by the way. You know, we sell hammers and stuff, too. If you want to and you like us and and stuff, go ahead. We got all the hammers you want in the world. But today, I'm going to show you how to put this together. Now, I'm, I've just, I just jumped from my website over to YouTube, where somebody would be looking for birdhouse tutorial, birdhouse construction tutorial. What if you made a video showing how to put together the kit, and at the end, you said, by the way, everything you saw me use here today, the cool little hook, hook claw hammer and, you know, the Timmy proof nails and all the other stuff. Well, right here in this box, I got a box that will send this to you and you can do the project and follow right along and have a great time with your kids. And while, while you're putting it together, he can be over there sniffing glue. <laughs> and so now we're, we're thinking in a way that we're make, we transition to making an offer as opposed to just selling stuff like everybody else. Amen. So anyway. No, that, that's good. You're exactly right. That That's the way to differentiate yourself in the digital marketing space. Right. I should probably like write a book about those five questions. Yeah, man, you can yeah. go off on that. Yeah, I could. I go off on a lot of stuff. It's mostly caffeine. <laughs> well, um, Tell me this, is yes. there, um, is there a special app for that? <laughs> a special wizard for that? Um, for what? For what we just talked about. What the hell did we you just know, talk about? Selling in the digital marketing space. Oh my it, God. That, Every I, single one of the scripts and wizards that I have is about helping you to sell in the digital market space. Either coming up with ideas for content Targeting your your audience, creating sales letters, writing emails, entire webinars, sales webinars, master classes, um, listicles, regular articles, Facebook lives, tidbit tips, all kind. I mean, every single thing I do is about creating amazing push button software tools to help anyone to get amazing results inside of the digital marketing space. That was-
was a perfect answer. Jim. That, that, that was my softball toss to you, and I expected that answer. But you deli- you delivered you delivered perfectly. My my final answer is yeah. is is remember the acronym ABS, ABS. Yeah. Always be selling. There you go. Always be selling. Huh. That's what that's how you sell in the digital marketing space. Everything you do has to be some form of content that Absolutely. directs people back to where you are. Doesn't have to be a hard pitch on a sale or anything, but they should realize, oh, there's this guy over at this website. Let me see what he's got today. Yeah, I love those acronyms, man. Like super hot internet training. Um, that's a great acronym, super hot internet training. <laughs> Um, so Jane just said, I just got a notification from the post office today to say, I have a package. It has to be your book, Jim. I'm so excited. That's awesome. If you'd like me to send you a package, head on over to copywritingsecrets.com. I'll be delighted to send you a copy of my book that you can see over here. Hang on one second. Um, right there. You can see Stu has a hardback edition right over his, uh, I won't send you a hardback edition though. But uh, if you go to copywritingsecrets.com, you can get a free copy of my book. Just pay a small shipping and handling, and uh, we'll get it right out to you. So Stu says you have him wound, or, or Carlin yeah. says, Stu, you have him wound up now. I like the standing up thing. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready I, and stuff. I'll do my stand up next week. And stuff. Yeah. Um, so that I was got, good. I got the same um, kind of desk you have. You just push a button, it goes up. Yeah. But it didn't make the sound yours made. What was that noise? That, what noise? I don't know. It was just the noise that just like sounded like a. That? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because my my um Mic microphone is my microphone is sitting on the desk ah. instead of. I mean, if I had my microphone positioned like this. All right. So what do you think, Stu? To hang yeah. this from my head? No, I'm not sure what's thing. going on. I was trying to make it like you have your microphone positioned oh. like this. Oh, okay, I got it. I, I got mean, it. if I get a vice or something, I could hook it onto my head. Hey, that makes it sound really good. So you're saying I'm too far from the thing? I need to get no. a boom. No, you're good. Um, so I think the new office worked today, Stu. I do. I think I think overall it was it was pretty good. Overall, I would say it was pretty freaking good. So did you guys enjoy it? Tell your I friends. A, I have a question for the uh, studio audience. Okay. Um, is there a topic you want to hear about next week for either the Jim and Stu show or the podcast number 114? If there is, send it. Let us know in Let the comments. Know. What would you like us to talk about? You know, it's funny. This isn't really like an office. It's more like I got a hallway. You know, I, I got a new hallway. I do have my own bathroom, though. There's just no toilet or sink in there waiting for the plumber to show up. Hmm. Um, I'm going to have an ice machine over here. So, you know, at some point during a live, you're going to hear that, you know, that hot hotel ice machine noise where the yeah. ice all drops and everybody's, that'll ruin a recording. But what are you going to do? Refills. Yeah. Local, and then people will be coming in refill. off the beach yeah. and stuff. I'm going to put one of the no cooler signs on it just to be a jerk. You know, because that's why we bought it. No cool. Do not fill coolers from machine. Just like at a hotel. You know what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Wow. Um. Okay. Well, thanks. C-Ray says it looks <laughs> like I'm in timeout. Oh, that's good. Judy says imposter syndrome. I so would we'll love to talk week. about imposter syndrome next week. Okay. I think that would be terrific, actually. Imposter syndrome would be good. Um, let's see. Uh, VJ says, I love to always hear about top three mistakes, tips, mistakes based on what you know. That's a little too general. Um, Gustavo says how to convert old content from someone else to new, fresh content for me. That's interesting. So how, how about- to get ideas from other people's content. Yeah, that's a good one. How about this one? Things that you wish you would have done 10 years ago. That you're already oh. doing now that you wish you would have done 10 years ago. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. 
like, man, I wish I would have pulled the trigger on this 10 years ago. <laughs> My big thing is always, I wish I'd done stuff faster. Not, you know, not like sat around and thought about stuff too much, you know? Yep. Um, okay. Somebody asked if we do, um, wrote bullets with funnel scripts. Does Jim critique any of his gigs? Um, one thing, good thing you can do is on Monday Madness, we actually critique people's funnels if they use the share funnels that we share on Funnel Fridays. So if you go to funnelfridays.com, you can uh, register for Funnel Fridays, get some free funnel scripts or get some free, well, some free funnel scripts and get some free uh, click funnels and, uh, you know, do it that way. That's, that's a way to potentially get a critique. Yep. If you're asking where you can find the podcasts, you can get them on Apple Podcasts, you can get them on Google Play, you can get them on Spotify. Um, but we also have the video version up on YouTube as well. And it's called the Sales Copy Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. Sales Copywriting Content Marketing Hacks Podcast. And <clears throat> here's a real high tech solution to your question. If you go to the Jim Edwards method.com forward slash podcast, oh, you'll find you, them. You can find it there. Yeah. So I just shared that in a few places. It doesn't show up in some places, but um, yeah, the Jim Edwards method.com forward slash podcast. Heck, Stu, let's show the kids at home. If yeah. you go to the Jim Edwards method.com forward slash podcast, well, looky, 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 looky. Oh, dude, I forgot to wear my, I got a, a Facebook jail uh, t-shirt I'll wear next time. Fun. It says, it's, it looks like an orange jumpsuit and it says repeat offender. <laughs> so we're in good shape. That's quite clever. Yeah. Bought it off of Etsy. Yeah. All right. Well, great job, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're always happy to serve, happy to help you. Uh, understand more about the world of sales copywriting and content marketing and uh we appreciate it everybody ha oh thanks gordon gordon threw in the link uh it's funnelfridays.com forward slash review that's where you can find out about potentially uh having us critique your funnel so that's all i've got Stu. are we good that's all i got awesome well, I appreciate everybody. And Stu, let's end with a polka. Yay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>